ladies. It is our Friday wrap up and I am here with Vicki Luna. We're at the Lighthouse Recovery Program today. Um, our little ladybug is here as well. She works with me on Tuesdays. This is Tuesday when we're recording this. Um, but I wanted to interview Vicki about our boundaries this week. Vicki is the director of the Lighthouse Recovery Program uh, and she's also my mentor. So we talked a lot about that this week. You can hear it over her. We talked a lot about that this week, about having a mentor, the importance of having that person that can speak into our life and help us to be better at relationships, better with people. And this is mine. This is Vicki. We sit and we talk and we chat about life and I get to hear the hard truths and the things that I need to grow in. And um, hopefully I'm aspiring to meet some of those you things are, that we talk about in those are. conversations. Um, but I wanted to talk to her today because she does work um, at the recovery program, it gives her an opportunity to um, work with people that are at a place in their life where they get to reflect on themselves and learn how to be better people. So boundaries is one of the topics that we talk about here um, with the clients. Every day, all day. <laughs> so what is, um, I guess first and foremost, because you talk about it a lot, what is something you um, want to tell us about boundaries? Like what's what do you hear all the time with boundaries, with the women that are coming in? Like, what's the, the issue that you think is most common that we could be more aware of ourselves? Um, well, they want to focus on everybody else's problems because then they don't have to look at their own. Um, so that's a boundary because then they start crossing over into other people's business, other people's lives, other people's situations. So that's a big boundary. Um, and that's just part of not wanting to look at your own stuff because when you look at your own stuff and you identify it, then you have to take responsibility and address it. So that that's always a big problem. So learning to... You, we talked a little bit earlier and you said... Um, some of the things that we need to learn how to do is to let our yes be yes and our no be no, and that will help us to set our boundaries. Can yes. you expand on that a little bit? So we have the girls read the boundaries book here um, by Henry Cloud, which is a great book. He has um, the boundaries book. He has boundaries for leaders, boundaries in marriage, lots of... Boundaries in dating. Yes, boundaries in dating. Lots of good stuff on boundaries. You guys already talked about building a fence. Building a fence takes work, mm -hmm. but it's also not a one-time thing. You know, a, a board may break or maybe from your sprinklers or maybe the neighbor's dog. So you have to be maintaining your fence as well. The simplest thing, because when these ladies first come in, they don't um, understand boundaries. You know, it, they're not going to read the book overnight. Um, but what we, t what we, the simple uh, boundary is let your yes be yes, let your no be no. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Um, so we're not just talking just to talk. Uh, we're not just talking to drown out the silence because nobody's comfortable with silence. Um, we're not just saying things because God says um, out of our mouth we will get, uh, give an account for every word that comes out of our mouth. So we're learning that. All of us are learning that. I've been setting boundaries for years and years and years, and I still have to go back and say, oops, I crossed your boundary. Please forgive me. Um, we're human. We're going to make mistakes. But um, if we consciously and intentionally identify boundaries, um, identify other people's boundaries, um, make sure ours are well established and we don't allow other people to cross our boundaries, um, then it becomes our character. It becomes who we are. Everybody knows what Vicki will accept and what Vicki won't accept. Everybody will know what Jessica accepts, what Jessica won't accept accept and people learn who you are and where you're at just like your property line your property your fence tells where your yard starts and where somebody else's um, ends so you uh, establishing those boundaries is constant uh, sometimes it's hard uh, with the people that we're close to because those people usually try to push your boundaries not not maybe not meaning to like that's maybe not be their agenda like oh that is um, Trina's boundary line, I think I'm going to try to cross that today. No, but their boundary line might not be as firm or strict as yours. Um, and so they may want to cross your boundary. I remember years ago when I smoked cigarettes and one of, I, I think it was, I think it was one of my sisters um, said uh, their child was in the car. So I think this is going to sound really terrible, but this was um, BC, right? <laughs> and so she said, or maybe her one of her kids wasn't in the car. Maybe it was a new car. And she said, there's no smoking in my car. And I said, well, then you better pull over and let me out. And I lit it. So that was crossing a boundary. 
um, that was crossing a big boundary. So um, looking back, if she would have had good boundaries that day, if she would have known what boundaries were, um, she would have pulled the car over and told me to get out of her car. If I would have known what boundaries was and how to respect other people's boundaries, then I would have asked before I thought I could smoke in her car. So learning those boundaries, establishing those boundaries, and maintaining those boundaries um, help to build your character and help you to be in good relationship with people. Because if people don't know what your boundaries are, then they may they may test them, not meaning to. Um, people that you're not as close in relationship with are not going to test your boundaries um, on a regular basis, especially if you're firm about your boundaries, uh, just because they don't know you and they're not in close relationships. So you, they don't have an unconditional love relationship with you, like maybe your sister or your brother or your spouse. So that, I'm going to throw that in. That has to do with those circles that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Some people are in our inner circle. We, mm -hmm. They have the ability to give us their opinions. Some of them are just familiar friends who don't really see us. They're not going to push our buttons or right. help us to grow or tell us the truth they're just going to go along mm -hmm. so right. absolutely yes so uh, letting your yes be yes and your no be no um, I'll give you an example of how how that works so you don't want to be a people pleaser you want to be a God pleaser so this is a, a women's Bible study right so we're learning how to have godly character and boundaries as part of that um, so just an example is I don't allow alcohol at my house. Um, my husband doesn't drink. I don't drink. Do I think it's a sin to drink? No. Do I think leaders should drink? No. Um, just because we have a testimony to tell. And what the people that we are ministering to, what they see us do, they think they can do plus some. So I've come to the personal decision that um, I believe that drinking does more harm than good, so I can do without it. So we don't allow it in our home. And um, sometimes uh, when we host a party or a holiday, um, you know, years ago people would come and six pack and tote. And so I would kindly say, um, thank you, but you're gonna have to leave that in the car because we don't practice that here. And they can get offended if they choose, um, but the bottom line is they're not crossing the threshold with their alcohol because that's not something that I, I um, accept. Um, and vice versa, we need to ask people um, on occasions where if we get a little indication that somebody might not feel good about something, then we need to ask their permission or we need to um, at least address it with them, not just assume or try to push our boundary or our way on them. And that helps us respect other people's boundaries when we can test that. And what we what we talked about, one of the laws of boundaries, that if you respect other people's boundaries, then people will in turn respect yours mm -hmm, when you mm -hmm. disagree. Yes. And there's that law, it's that cause and effect that kind of um, wraps up in there. If you were to, I feel like a lot of people listening hear these boundary things and they look at it, it kind of gets overwhelming sometimes. It's like, mm -hmm. I need to work on every one of my relationships. What is some advice that you can give, or maybe a relationship that you would say, choose to work on this relationship first, or where can we start when we learn, mm -hmm. just learn and are become aware of the idea of boundaries? Mm -hmm. Where is a good place to start? I think the best place to start is with, with you, individually. You need to determine who you are, because a lot of your boundaries is really your identity. Who are you? What do you believe in? What do you stand for? What is okay with you? What's not okay? So build your own fence first. And then you determine where the people in your inner circle, where their fence is, because you don't want to um, keep crossing their boundary. So you want to have respect. Of course, as a woman, you if you're married, you need to respect and submit to your husband. So you really need to know where his boundaries are. Um, uh, we um, can be persuasive as well, but we don't want to push it in disrespect. So you start with yourself. Understand who you are, what you stand for, what your identity is. And then you have to present those boundaries in love. Matter of fact, but in love. So... You can't just say, oh my, you know, the drinking situation. I couldn't say, oh my gosh, you're bringing alcohol to my house. Well, no, we don't want to offend people. We want to say, I'm sorry for me. You know, we don't do that here. So you don't want to offend people. You want to speak the truth in love. You want them to feel welcome and loved. And at first, people are going to get their feathers ruffled. They just are because no one likes hearing no. No one likes being called out, even though that's not what you're trying to do. Um, but when you put that boundary, uh, it feels a little uncomfortable. But if remember, building that fence, you, it takes work, you sweat, so it's a little uncomfortable at first. But if you just keep reiterating your boundary and don't wiggle, 
Don't be like, okay, well, today we're not allowing alcohol in our house, but on New Year's Eve we do. Don't be, don't waver. Don't waver between two opinions. Make a decision, make up your mind, and stick to it. Your kids in training, um, if you have children in your home, they are going to see your boundaries, and you're going to be training them without bickering at them. Uh, you're going to be training them. So my kids know um, they were never raised with alcohol in, in the, our home. So they already know that there's no drinking or cussing or things like that. So, um, you know, when they were figuring out who their friends were, uh, some of their friends were coming over. They were bringing them to the house, not because I didn't want them there or because they weren't invited, but because they might use language that they know their mom is not okay with or, or they might, as they got older, maybe they might want to try to bring alcohol. So my kids already knew those boundaries and so everybody kind of knows where your established fence line is um, just because you practice it when you um, I feel like a lot of people have talked about this in this boundary setting um, there's those people that we always say yes because we're afraid of hurting people's feelings when they guilt us into a commitment or an obligation or a, what is a tip that, that you can give to us to be able to say, you know, the polite no mm -hmm. or, you know, well, if you deal with those feelings that we've, mm -hmm. if you follow the word of God, he says, count the cost, right? So before you say yes, you count the cost. Don't say yes because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Um, I have a friend, she says no really well and she doesn't give a reason why. Um, and at first that used to bother me, but now I know she lets her yes be yes and her no be no. So if I say, hey, can you help me at this um, baby shower? She'll either say yes or no. Very simple. Um, but once I learned that about her, I knew that if she said yes, she was going to be there. Mm -hmm. And if she said no, I could count her out. That helped me. Um, did I go off the question? No, no, that's good. Because when you give a firm yes mm -hmm. and when you then you can give a no and your, your friends will respect that because they know that when you do say yes, that you're um, confident committed. in that mm -hmm. and you're committed and you're going to be there and they don't have to worry. Cause we all know there's some of those people that say, I'll be there. I'll be at your party. And they don't show up. And we RSVP and we plan for 50 people and only 40 show up and mm -hmm. we've got all the sexual Not seats. nice. It's not, not nice. nice. It's and nothing. neither is maybe on Facebook, yeah. but that's a whole nother, yeah. y'all have heard yeah. me on that one. And uh, you know, since this is a Bible study, it's the word of God that shapes our character. Mm -hmm. So one, count the cost. And two, the Bible says, keep your promise even when it hurts. So oh. if you've said yes to something, do it, do it, even when it hurts, do it. Make sure that you fulfill your obligation because that says uh, a lot about your character and your integrity as a, as a person. And it's okay, you've had to say no to some things in order to mm -hmm. um, focus on your family at certain times, right? And that's, yes. mm -hmm. I mean, I'll find we get, I get a little FOMO, fear of missing out sometimes, but when we say no in order to mm -hmm. work on our family, I think that I would say you've reaped the benefits of that or the blessings of that, and I, I'm on the outside looking in, but your kids are smart and well-rounded, and you've had to pay the price. They are. It was the wooden spoon kids. and the boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> but they are, they are good kids, but you've paid that. Mm -hmm. um, said no to some things and obligations so you could be with your family and you could work on that because that was your first priority. Mm -hmm. Now they're a little older. You've got a little more time for some other things, but those boundaries have changed. They change. They're what, what once was boundaries, sometimes they change and they mm -hmm. evolve with people. That's the great thing about fences. They can be moved. They can grow mm -hmm. or they can close up and they can yep. shrink. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the greatest thing about blessing or yeah. about boundaries. Yeah. So I would say knowing who you are. Um, so knowing your identity, who are you? What do you stand for? What do you believe in? And then learning, um, learning the people in your inner circle and then working out. Perfect. Well, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you so much for joining me this Friday wrap up. Do you want to close us out in prayer? This is our sure. Friday wrap up. Sure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Father, I come before you and I thank you, God. I thank you for your word that heals us, that changes us, that gives us a firm foundation, God. I ask that you would continue to bless this Bible study. Thank you for changing the ears that these words and the truth falls upon, God. I ask that you would help them to build their fences, help them to maintain their fences, help them to speak the truth in love, count the cost, God, and keep their promises even when it hurts. We glorify your name. We thank you, God, for growing us and help us all, God, to be intentional. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We'll see you later. See you next week. Bye. Bye.